Right, I have loads of guests today, and I'm doing the best I can. But what, what a superb way to round up the show this morning. Uh, it has to be Madame Patience, who has been patient with me this very lovely day. Madame Patience Johnson, a world-renowned cosmetic dermatologist, an eminent researcher, an author, a motivational speaker, a beauty industry entrepreneur, a multi-award winning international tutor, Eagle Award uh, from Germany on corporate uh, leadership, an icon and the CEO of Dema Control Worldwide based in Germany. She's currently consulting at Dema Control Aesthetics and Beauty Clinic Abuja, treating all kinds of skin issues as we have here. Good morning to you, madam. It's good to see you. Good morning. Thank yes, you. Long, you. Longest time. Yes, I know. I know. I know. I'm, thank God that I'm, I'm back with the team uh, this very lovely day. So let's talk about uh, what's going on this week. What, what are we discussing this week? Um, uh, uh, we will discuss, talk about uh, mouth odor. Oh, yes. Yeah. Last mm -hmm. week I made a, a, a kind of, a, okay, I presented a going for medical checkup. Mm hmm which is uh, if you don't go for medical checkup that's where you have some ailments that you think are incurable mm -hmm. but just with a proper medical checkup definitely they are they are curable you see like a mouth odor i think in upper week i discussed on body odor mm -hmm. so this week i just think okay let me bring up mouth odor too because it's also an ailment that a lot of people have and they don't know why and uh, they don't know what to do and the mouth odor is actually not something that you were born with. Mm. It's lack of personal hygiene. What do I mean when I say personal hygiene? I think a lot of people brush their mouth only in the morning. Mm. But the most important brushing of the mouth is the one of the evening after your dinner. Oh. Because you're going to bed and then at night there's low production of saliva. You know saliva makes is what cleanses our tongue and our teeth and the, the gums so at the at night there's low production of saliva so you need to brush your mouth brush up those um eat, uh, food rest in your in your mouth so that they don't remain there because if they remain there overnight then maybe you're going to come out having body odor so another thing that could lead to um, not body odor mouth odor another thing that could lead also to mouth odor is when you have a wound in your gum that is not treated. Yeah, that's when you it, there could be accumulation of bacteria there and they will start producing some certain odor. Mm -hmm. Some certain food too, alcohol, cigarettes can also lead to mouth odor. You bringing out some certain odor from your mouth. So this, that is why it's important that you make sure that you brush your mouth at least two times in a day. Mm -hmm. But I do brush mine any any time I eat something, even if it is fruit, I have to go in and brush my mouth because I don't want most of those food rest to remain inside my mouth. Okay. So let, let me go back to the one of the things that cause mouth odor, which is what I, you talked about food debris. First, yeah, so food debris, yeah. That stays on. Yeah. So in the event, because one of the things we all grew up in, with is depending on who taught you how to brush first. Yeah. That would determine how you brush That's for a right. very long time. I don't want to say for the rest of yeah, your life. Yeah, yeah, And sometimes people are very, very particular about the very visible parts of the that's right. right. That's right. Watch the teeth, That's but right. leave out the, the mouth inside. itself. That's right. What are the proper ways uh, in order to safeguard against uh, debris? I, from I, I think when you ask the average Nigerian, like, or it's not, it's more than an average now. I think uh, if you ask me how many Nigerians have been to a dentist for just normal cleansing, there's what we call prophylaxis. Mm. Yeah, prophylaxis. We call it in German. I don't know the English word. <laughs> <laughs> prophylaxis is when you go to a dentist. It's actually something you're supposed to be doing every three months. Mm. That you go just lie down on that their bed and they check out what or they they will go with a special light and the, a, a machine with pressure that brings out water for mm -hmm. cleansing. So mm -hmm. any debris that is inside or in between the teeth and then at the back of your teeth because these are the areas where you can't see. Mm. So even with your toothbrush, it, it does not mean that you're cleaning all of them out. So when you go to a dentist, then they, they see everything while you are lying down and they'll be able to remove it. It's supposed to be a regular something. If you know that you're already having that mouth odor, it's there that they will also indicate if there's a decay mm. in the teeth. That, because the decay don't usually appear on the surface of the teeth, but in under. Mm -hmm. So that's where you need a dentist. So even if you like buy mouthwash, buy the best toothbrush, buy the best tooth 
a base so long as he's not been treated by a dentist the order will still remain and, and there's also the question of about being aggressive when you do wash i mean there are all kinds of toothbrushes yeah. now uh some endorse some not endorse yeah there, there are people who have had to brush some call it the smokers to brush and that is not medium good. and soft uh, yeah. tell us about this that is not good i remember i remember when i came back from singapore i gave uh, my hotel uh, toothbrush because they supplied me many so i couldn't finish it so i gave it to one of my girls and she said oh this is a toothbrush that does it's not even strong enough <laughs> but she doesn't know that it's the, even the best toothbrush because it must not be hard. If it's hard, it spoils the enamel. That's the front of your teeth. And that's why sometimes when you use something that is hard, hard on the teeth, you will end up having this, uh, when you drink cold water, you, it's like your, your teeth is shaking, kind of. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's not comfortable. Or if you want to bite anything that has uh, is acidic, like orange or, or, or um, a pineapple, you will have this uh, funny feeling on your teeth. So I think the best is the soft brush or even the middle brush, but not really the hard one. Because okay. they cause they can even pull your gum. They can also damage your gum. Because that's why some people they have bleeding gum after brushing. Because the brush is too hard. It's working too hard. And the best way to brush is okay, I can't demonstrate it on a radio <laughs> because all this is what we teach people to. The best way to brush is up and down and then inside. But there's a way and not really with pressure. Okay. But the best way to get rid of debris from your teeth is make sure you do proper check -up. Go for your dental checkup. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, of course, you you also deal with the issues of the mouth and, of course, uh, the skin. Yeah. Um, and we know oftentimes that people use all kinds of stuff uh, in order to have other teeth whitening. Yeah. And uh, all kinds of situations. Yeah. In order just to, let's supposedly look for a permanent solution to... Yeah. Uh, the condition of our mouth, mm -hmm. um, including the use of bleach, some That's kinds right. of bleach. That's right. Are there implications to? There are bleach? implications, especially when you do it with a non-professional, like what I see on internet. People selling whitening, teeth whitening. Come, we do teeth whitening, and when you check out, you are not supposed to use a peroxide oxide gel on teeth. Even if you're using, there's supposed to be a certain percentage of it. Unfortunately, because these people just buy it from eBay or from uh, Alibaba, they just try to ship it to them and they start using it on people without even knowing what teeth to treat and what treat teeth not to treat. Mm. It's not everybody that is eligible to, to do teeth whitening mm -hmm. because you may cause more harm than good. There are certain gel you're supposed to use. It's not every gel that is recommended. There are certain hours that you need, like in my clinic. Sometimes when they will come, oh, will it be just like white? I say, no, we have a color card and there are certain level of uh, color uh, shade that you will reach. But it's not going to be as white as snow. Why? Because teeth naturally is not as white as snow. So we will bring out the card. Unfortunately, when you do it in a spa or this, these people were not trained for this. And sometimes when they come to my clinic, I have to do a total check control of the teeth. If there are debris or some something that I see that is not supposed to be there, I will send them rather to a dentist. Mm. Because my own is the cosmetic part of it. But the dentist has to do the professional work, which is not mine. So unfortunately, people just go, let me go and bleach my teeth, but they don't really know the implications of doing it with the wrong people. What are the, you talked about customology now, just yeah. no, uh, custom, cosmeticology now, yeah. <laughs> just now. And I'm, I'm just starting to imagine, because what appears and appeals to people is a lot of experiment from the bleaching mm -hmm. to... Uh, no, I need my tongue to be pink, I need my lips to be pink, yeah. and all kinds of options that people do try on yeah, yeah. as part of that. What are the other ideas, I mean, that is trending mm -hmm. uh, that you as a cosmetologist would would recommend or want to explore as a conversation with a customer who walks in and says, I just want my mouth to be superb. Yeah. What are the things that are available? Yeah, there are person? something we call a like permanent makeup, which I do, like my lip now is permanent, so oh. I just use it to enhance the lip. I didn't inject anything. When you say permanent? Yeah, permanent is a, a pigment color. Oh, pigment. They are invented by me. The color pigment is carrying my own name. So oh. I'm the one that invented it. 
So I use it. The ever first award I got in America was on this. Uh, we call it micropigmentation. Is the wow. uh, my this uh, technique, lip technique that I innovated. So we can use it if the form is disfigured. Unfortunately, this is not a market for me in Africa. Why? Mm. Because our mouth is wonderfully made. Mm. And I think God spent extra hour on it. So there was no mistake. There is no mistake in a black man's mouth. But I just use it to enhance because mine is a bit big, so I wanted it a bit to look optically smaller. So I Im implanted some colors in it so that it will look just small. So the another thing is like eyebrow. My eyebrow is permanent makeup, which I think is market for Africa because we have a lot of sun, people sweat makeup and then it falls off. So with this now, I can walk around 24 hours till the next 10, 20 years without any anything falling off okay. yes yeah, so, so that's what we do the one i don't do is the skin whitening mm. because i'm really campaigning against it seeing what happens or is happening in my clinic every day that people have really lost it with this they will tell you they are toning they want to glow their skin they want to so i'm not really in for that but in case if anybody has got got those damage like sometimes they will have patches on their skin or this uh, uh, dark knuckles Mm. You can come to me, I will reconstruct your skin, but it's going to cost you some money because uh, you've already damaged the thing and I'm going to help you reconstruct, but not under 24 hours mm. because that's still the, where I, I still have little issue with them. I grew, I, grew, yeah, I grew up in an environment where you know that everything in life has to go through the process. I grew up going through the process. That's why I'm a world champion today because I went through the process. You understand? I visited a lot of universities. I went to a lot of conferences, seminars to mm. build my knowledge. Unfortunately, here you see people, they wake up the next morning, they want to be like Patience Johnson. Ah. They, steal, uh, they steal your idea and go open up some park clinic, claiming to be what they are not. Mm. But for me, why I'm a bit at peace is that if professionality, you don't hide it. You, don't. You, you understand? Experience, you can never use money to buy it. Okay, so the...